Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi. I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about a pretty interesting story arc that took place in Mighty Avengers, which started really well. It had a lot of promise, but the end of the story, at least I didn't like it. Um, I feel sort of like they jumped the shark at the end. A lot has to do with the art. First and foremost, the writers of the story are Dan Slott and Chris Gage. It came out in 2009. The first couple of issues of the story arc are illustrated by Koi Pham. Really good job. Gets the tone right for the story. But then we change to Shin Chen, and oh, it's just not the best. It does, doesn't work for me. Uh, there's a couple of artistic decisions that sort of take me out of the story. I forgot to mention, this takes place in Mighty Avengers issue 27 to 31. Start off with the Inhumans. You got Black Bolt, Medusa, uh, Karnak, and Gorgon. They just went through the Tears and Mist process. They want to see the King of the Inhumans. We see this character that we haven't seen previously. That they, his, Every time they say his name, it's been blacked out. They can't mention his name. Uh, this edition is in Spanish, so I guess his name is the Forgotten One or the, the, the Unnamed One or something like that. I'm going to go with the Forgotten One. They tell him that there's this device called the Slave Engine. He hid it away. He doesn't want the Inhumans to have it anymore. And Karnak tells him, it's like, what you've done is put all the Inhumans at risk. And uh, basically, they're plotting a coup to take them off the, uh, off the, um, off the throne. And he must give them back this uh, apparatus uh, machine called the Slave Engine idea premise of the this thing called the slave engine is that if humans ever become a danger to the inhumans um they can use this device and basically change humans into uh alpha primitives so the name one has a brief battle with these young inhumans which ends badly obviously he gets dethroned he loses the title of king black bolt company kick them off out of the um, Attilan the Inhumans uh, city he's ex exiled pretty much humiliated he goes into hiding and um, what happens is he comes back due to a couple of really bad things that happened to the Inhumans um, the whole thing with the silent war the whole situation that Quicksilver started in the first place when he stole away the Tyrgen crystals Started a war between the humans and humans, and the humans left, went out into space. So the forgotten one is back. He's pissed off. Like he had, a, he believed in human humanity that they were going to strive for something good and they were going to be noble. But all they do is war and cause trouble for his people. So he's back and angry. He's roaming around China, causing trouble. We get the introduction of the Infinity Mansion. That it's an awesome concept. I really liked it. Well, the Forgotten One crosses paths with the Avengers of China. Uh, there's a, 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 a line of dialogue here. The Forgotten One just totally destroys them. And when I saw this scene, I thought to myself, and then I read the line, they got alpha flight, <laughs> flighted. That just really, really made me crack up. So Quicksilver sends a message to the Avengers, to his teammates, that they need help. They have to deal with this alpha level menace. Scarlet Witch makes sure that no one finds out. Obviously, the Scarlet Witch isn't the real deal. She's actually Loki. But Casey Lang, uh, Ant-Man's daughter, sees the situation. She knows something's wrong with the Scarlet Witch. Wants to tell her, her teammates, but uh, Loki actually puts a, um, a spell on her so she can't tell him what what's going down. So... Back in China with a brief, super, uh, brief superhero misunderstanding between the China Avengers and US agent and Quicksilver get a little brief battle there goes to uh, her old teammates the young Avengers to see if they can help her out with the situation with the Scarlet Witch Wiccan uses his powers to invoke her we get a pretty interesting situation because when they confront her who arrives Ronin Hawkeye who is really pissed off with Scarlet Witch but she actually killed him uh, back when she flipped out. I don't remember if her name was Casey or Cassie Lang. Oh, well, I'm going to have to look that up later. So, sorry. Put it in the comments below. So, Young Avengers, Ronan, 
try to um, confront Scarlet Witch, things obviously go into full-on battle between these characters. While Henry Pym is uh, going into a um, dimension that's above all dimensions to see if he can find where Wasp is. She apparently had died, but Haw uh, Hawkeye, um, Hank Pym has a hypothesis that she's falling to another dimension and he's going to try to find her. And we're going to get something really, really interesting uh, with that situation that at least I really liked. So the Forgotten One starts changing heroes into these type of alpha primitive uh, cavemen. I realize this Scarlet Witch isn't the real deal. That uh, she, She's an imposter. What happens with Hank Pym is actually he, he encounters Eternity. And Eternity actually asks Hank Pym if he can become the new Scientist Supreme. You have Sorcerer Supreme and the Scientist Supreme. And Hank Pym tells, tells him, he's like, but Reed Richards and Iron Man are smarter than I am. And the whole logic between why he chooses, uh, Eternity chooses Hank Pym over those two characters, it makes sense. It's very well written. I really like it. So while this is going on, the battle rages on against the Forgotten One. And this whole story arc with the Forgotten One, it's like one issue too long. Um, we get this incredible battle where all these Avengers arrive, but... The way the the artist executes the the art to this battle, it just doesn't work for me. I don't like it, and some of the dialogues just don't work. They feel sort of dumb. The quality of writing dips, in especially in the last issue. At least for me, it just doesn't work. But the idea of having a scientist supreme, really awesome. So in the last issue. The heroes are finally able to deal with um, the Forgotten One. They d they're able to destroy the slave engine. And at the end of the story, there's a really cool detail. It feels really rushed. Everything's done in one page. The slave machine, a slave engine is powered by these crystals, very similar to the Terrigen Mist, they're called Zerogen Crystals. They take them back to the Inhumans that are they're in outer space now. I really love that time for the Inhumans. And as a token of uh, asking for forgiveness, and he tells the humans that he didn't he didn't take the crystals originally. It was a scroll, imposter, and so everything's good with Quicksilver and the humans after this. But his daughter, who can see it's her powers to see if a person's lying or stuff like that, tells him it's like I know you're dying and I can't. Um, you're lying and I can't respect you for that. And it really it ends. And these four panels here is like, oh, it's a gut punch. <laughs> it, it really shifts the tone of the story. Uh, and it's pretty good. This, this is like a redeeming quality. This, as I said before, the whole thing with the Forgotten One, it's one issue too long. The art I didn't like in the second part, but the concept was really awesome. So see you guys next time.